I re-remastered Skyrim with over 200 mods, but that's a tried with the Anniversary Edition, but I think the modding community has done better. I've organized the mods into four different categories, graphics, immersion, new content, and combat. Then from this massive list, I selected nearly 40 of my favorite mods to talk about. Skyland AIO might make one of the biggest differences in your Skyrim experience. It's an all-in-one texture pack that transforms so many visual aspects of the game. It's like if some master craftsman found some petrified dinosaur turd, that's Skyrim, and is like, you know what, let's polish this baby up. Skyland changes nearly every texture into something new and just freaking cool looking. It changes cities, bridges, caves, forests, glaciers, and like a ton more. It's also just a great baseline to add on other mods. Honestly, I think that all Majestic Mountains does is change how shadows work on mountains, but man, does it make a difference. Seriously, Vanilla Skyrim Mountains look like a big blob of pixelated chunks, and it kind of makes me want to throw up. That's probably just acid reflex or something, but I'm going to blame Todd Howard anyways. This mod also changes all the mini mountains, aka boulders, around Skyrim too, so that's a bonus. Volumetric Mists bring mist slash fog into Skyrim. Yes, keep talking. This mod creates realistic misty valleys and obscures mountaintops with little wispies that go with the wind. Oh my god, is this real life? The cool thing about this is the effect is achieved without even needing an ENB. All the various mists are hand placed, which in this case is really nice. Everything looks like it belongs and it's amazing. Alright, so we've got mountains, a bunch of other textures, fog, and now TB's improved water is going to blast that ugly vanilla water straight into the atmosphere like it's one of those snap-on bidets. This mod completely overhauls all the water in Skyrim. Now this looks like the water I'm used to in real life. No, but seriously, this water looks really good. All right, now let me run through these last few graphics mods super quick because I mean, really, it's just more pretty things. HD photorealistic ivy, damn, that's pretty neat, but really only cool for screenshots. Happy little trees, okay, this one is definitely worth getting because Skyrim is covered in trees, so you're gonna see a lot of them. And these trees just look so much more filling. Kind of a weird way to describe it, but it's a tree. This mod makes them fill up more space, which makes things seem more dense. Northern grass. Guys, it's like my favorite mod. You know this already. It's so flowy. Northern roads is better roads, and it's not blended roads, so it's something new and looks really good. Oh, plus it adds these sweet little Nordic wood decorative beams all over the place. Pretty sick. Enhanced landscapes adds thousands of various objects all over Skyrim. Fallen trees, little structures, other trees with moss on them. Yeah, it just makes the world feel more lived in. Now let's move on to the most immersive mods I could get my grubby little hands on. Well, no, not really. My hands are pretty clean. But you know what's not so clean? This dank ass skooma. Skyrim on skooma is the actual Elder Scrolls embodiment of Alice in Wonderland. No more is skooma some boring drug like nicotine, no. With this mod, your skooma becomes a proper recreational substance with 69 possible scenarios and over a thousand different variations. Each time you consume a skooma, you'll experience a wild trip that lasts around 60 seconds. For example, well, you'll see different visual effects like these strings connecting us all, or you'll see this uh, massive goat, or I guess cow. You might even just get an uncontrollable urge to dance. This mod is a ton of fun and takes your in-game substance abuse to a whole other level. So the Anniversary Edition added some new horse-based mechanics, but this mod expands upon those features and makes them more useful. Press H to horse adds a feature that allows you to call your horse by tapping H. You can also direct your horse to different locations and swap your horse out on the fly by holding H. Horse customization has been significantly reworked allowing you to put on different saddles and other special types of horse gear. Since we're already talking about horses, I also threw on this other horse mod called Horses on Patrol, which is not some terrible new a &E show, no, it's a mod that adds several different horse patrols that roam around Skyrim. Because I mean, come on, how come no one rides horses in this game besides the player? Kinda weird. With this mod you'll start seeing guys like this, just patrolling about or parked at their camps. Much better. Immersive interactions is pretty freaking cool. This mod takes your immersion levels up to 9000. After you install this, you'll be able to perform Form context aware animations organically when interacting with the world. See? Now when your hands are empty, you'll do these cool little animations when you do activities. Is this Skyrim or Red Dead Redemption? Am I right? Ha 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 ha. I love to play this game in third person because I like to see all the cool armors and weapons displayed on my character. However, the third person movement and camera kind of suck. With true directional movement, Skyrim turns into something more modern, something closer to Elden Ring or even Uncharted, and it feels really good. With TDM, you get this nice little lock-on cursor that 
it takes combat to another level, but we'll get more into that in just a minute. Smooth Cam has been around forever, but I don't see enough people using it. The vanilla camera in Skyrim is so outdated. Seriously, who thought it would be a good idea to put the character dead center? Anyways, Smooth Cam fixes it, and there's tons of different presets you can try out. This mod turns lumpy old jank Skyrim into cinematic God of War Ragnarok Skyrim, and daddy like God of War. AI overhaul will modify your NPC behavior to be more believable. No more will these bland pepper too spicy NPCs be doing the same thing all day, every day. With this mod, everyday Skyrim turns into a more unique experience. You'll see them interacting with each other and the environment, especially the weather. No one stands out in the rain anymore, and also they'll run away from danger. Alright, so these sound mods by Sata Phoenix are life changing. I'm serious. You listen to a few of these bad boys and you'll rethink the last 20 years of your existence. This particular sound mod completely rewards the dragon sounds. Worm. Arm, how are you supposed to say that word? It doesn't matter. Now, these ancient beasts sound more bassy and honestly just feral. It's awesome. There's more sound mods in this list, but this one is probably my favorite. With this mod, the rain in Skyrim will splash and splatter on surfaces and also makes little ripples in larger bodies of water. That's nice. This one is arguably less immersive because when characters fall in this game, it's hilariously unrealistic, but that's precisely why I need it. I mean, look at this. With the immersive tripwires, tripwires set by the player will have a chance to trip the enemies that walk through them. Also, you can trip yourself. It's humorous and tactical. I like to set them around giant camps and then go mess with the mammoths. Through mods, there's tons of new content that you can add to the game. There's weapons, mounts, enemies, quests, and even entire new areas. It's one of the best things about modding Skyrim. Skyrim's paraglider gives the player access to the skies and it's glorious. You can use it to travel vast distances or swoop down on your enemies like your Viking Batman. It's also got this nifty little power that shoots you up into the sky. Kind of weird, but just pretend you're summoning some massive hot air vent directly beneath you. It's a little immersion breaking, but that's okay because it's a ton of fun. Scout bows have been around for a long time, but someone recently put out a new 4k version of the mod and it's perfect. Nearly every vanilla bow now has a scoped version. I love the idea of using an actual sight for my bow and not just the screen drawn crosshairs. With this mod, you're able to turn off the crosshairs entirely, allowing yourself to be completely engrossed in the world of Elder Scrolls. In most games, horses are a ton of fun to ride. In Skyrim, it sucks. Admittedly, this mod doesn't really change the actual controlling of the horse, which is the worst part, but it does change their look and adds a number of new variants. I mean, look at this unicorn horse. That's pretty sick. And this one is on fire. If you're not using Diverse Dragon Collection already, then you need to install it soon, or even like right now. Vanilla Skyrim Dragons get old after the first couple hours. I mean, aren't there like two models? And on top of that, they're basically just different colors. Neat. This mod adds 20 unique dragon models with their own textures, meshes, and abilities. This is a forest dragon. It's got horns and shoots a green forest beam. This is a swamp dragon. He kind of weird. Actually freaking me out a little bit. I also like to tack on infinite dragon variants, which literally might make dragon variants variations limitless. This mod will mix and match all the different aspects of dragons, creating probably millions of different combinations. These next three mods are all weapon mods. The first one is Daggerkin. This is probably my favorite dagger mod because it feels like it belongs in the game and it's super high quality. Plus look at it, it's a little Dovakin. Aww. How cute. Yggdrasil is another one of my favorites because it's a legit Viking sword, and that's what Skyrim is supposed to be about, right? And even the scabbard. I love it. Then Eagle's Demon Hunter Scythe is interesting because you really don't see too many scythe mods out there, and it looks really cool in pictures. Warden of the Coast is a fully voiced DLC scythe experience that was inspired by Mass Effect and Dragon Age. Basically, you travel to an isolated island, find some new companions, stop a Daedric Lord, and mess around with Oblivion once again. What more could you ask for? This mod uses 27 different voice actors, which I think is a little less, or maybe even more than what base Skyrim had. There's multiple endings and even romance quest lines. Ooh, saucy. Baba Yaga and the Labyrinth installs a creepy ass hut with legs into your game, but also this, this hat really big. Oh, and also there's these heathens from Doctor Who. A lot of your time in Skyrim revolves around combat. You owe it to yourself to make that portion of the game as enjoyable as possible, which is easy enough if you know where to look. You're about to have your socks blown off. Nemesis in Alternative Death System brings the Shadow of Mordor Nemesis system into the Elder Scrolls. And I'm not sure that's technically legal because didn't Warner Brothers like patent that system or something? <coughs> I ain't no snitch. With this mod, whenever an enemy defeats you in battle, they'll turn into a unique Nemesis 
Nemesis, which is really cool because it creates integrated stories of bloodlust and revenge. When an enemy kills you, it allows them to take some of your gear and use it against you. Your character will also get a situational debuff like cannot use shields or something like that. You'll then have the opportunity to track down that nemesis and get your mojo back. It's a lot of fun, it adds depth, it adds replayability, and I can't recommend it enough. Precision Accurate Melee Collisions makes your opponents react accurately to your attacks. For instance, say you hit your enemy from the left, well then they'll stagger with the blade instead of just some random direction like in vanilla Skyrim. This mod also adds fancy weapon trails, coherent hit stop, and subtle camera shake. Very nice, yes very nice indeed. This mod author makes some of the coolest animations I've ever seen. For Honor and Skyrim overhauls the various attack animations your character uses. There's a ton of different fighting styles that you can check out. Right here I'm using the Peacekeeper version of the mod, which utilizes a sword and dagger. Other styles the author has created are Aramusha, this ninja one, there's tons of bow options and two-handed variants. You should check out his mod page and see which interests you best. This mod enhances the bandit system within the game. There's 13 new archetypes of bandits inspired by previous Elder Scrolls titles. Each has their own strengths and weaknesses. You'll start seeing different types of bandits, boss bandits, and other improvements. Now there's tons of perk and magic overhaul mods out there, so I'm going to briefly mention my favorite two. Ordinator, Perks of Skyrim, and Apocalypse Magic Overhaul. Why do I like these the best? Well, honestly, it boils down to that I think that these two mods provide really fun and unique perks and spells. See, look, this spell lets you summon a literal volcano to spew all over your enemies. Pretty wicked. Growl, Where Beast of Skyrim is fun because it enhances werewolf gameplay and also lets you become a werebear. There's new perks, passives, and howling. Plus, you get new bonuses depending on your character race. For example, Wood Elves get 10% extra movement speed while in beast form. Oh, and you'll now regenerate health and be able to, you know, eat dead things like a normal werebeast. Honestly, there's a lot of quality of life changes in this mod too, so it's definitely worth installing for any playthrough. Scion, a vampire overhaul, is a desperately needed revamp ha, to the vampire system. It balances existing mechanics and adds powerful new abilities to the game. Basically, now you'll have vampire stages where both buffs and debuffs grow stronger. At the highest tier, you'll be shaking off hits left and right, resisting disease and poison, but also not liking the sun or those pesky flames. You'll get a few new vampire powers like Champion of the Night, which surrounds you with a cloud of bats draining enemy health over time. Damn, that was a ton of mods in not a very long time. Aren't you satisfied? Oh, you're not? Yeah, me either. If you're serious about improving your Skyrim experience, then you should check out how to turn Skyrim into an actual RPG next. Oh, and I've placed the links to all these mods in the Discord server below. 